Good evening, everyone. We are pleased to have with us tonight Dominica Gulina, a long-standing member of MIPP and, should I say, probably the premier sports photographer in the Maltese Islands over the past almost three decades now. Um, Dominic is quite renowned. He's, he's been awarded the Sports Photographer of the Year on several occasions. And he's been covering major sports events for major organizations like Cueva. And uh, he's a long term character, but beyond the equipment, what I feel that Dominic's work shows is that it'll, photography is not really about the equipment, although the equipment obviously helps with what you intend to do, but the level of output that Dominic has been able to produce consistently over such a long number of years showcases that when one is committed and dedicated, you can actually reach a level which is on a par with what any other country can produce. So it's not a question of being Maltese or not. All it takes is commitment and hand work, and I think Dominic encapsulates that. Dominic, we're pleased to have you with us. I leave it in your able hands. Thank you, Charles. I thank you for your lovely introduction. Uh, just one question, please. Um, shall I put it in Maltese or in English? In English, please. If... In English, no problem. So basically, um, I will be putting up quite a, a detailed presentation um, of how actually my my work for flow is during the sports events I normally cover, mainly football. As many of you know, I specialize in football, but of course I I do cover any sport discipline that is basically thrown at me. So uh, basically we will be talking about the title says it all. Sports photography in today's media, it's all about planning, producing and delivery. From the moment the capture is taken till the final product is wired to the client. So feel free to ask um, anything you need to know uh, during my presentation. So uh, this is a little bit um, about me. Obviously, I'm Maltese born. I myself taught photography, photographer. Um, I'm a freelance photo reporter and a football writer as, as well. So uh, I am a football journalist as well. I'm the, I'm the senior country correspondent for UEFA.com. This year uh, has be, was my 20th year as UEFA.com country correspondent. Stringer for European Press Photo Agency. I'm a partner as well uh, for Imago Sport Photo Diest, which is a, a stock photo agency specializing in sports photography. And I'm the chief sports photographer at the Malta Independent. Recently, I have been working as well for the Times of Malta. Uh, I'm the official photographer of the Malta Syrian national football team, and uh, these are my uh, accolades. I'm in uh, Malta Sports Photographer of the Year at the Malta Journalism Awards, and the SWPP Sports Photographer of the Year in 2011. Um, something more concise, uh, 14 of our Champions League finals. This is all I have covered to date. Um, uh, obviously, UEFA assignments are quite intense, um, uh, even on home soil. So at the moment, basically, I'm doing everything uh, on home soil because since COVID kicked, kicked in, uh, basically, I not have been, I have not been abroad except with the multinational team. Mm -hmm. So um, what shall we talk about? It's all about what the clients request. It's all about choosing the ideal positions, getting different angles, wiring of photos, and that's way to do it, copyright issue, ethics, and much more. So as you can see, it will be quite a very interesting presentation. So these are my mottos. Be patient. 
things do not come by in a fraction of a second. And when I say this, I say it to uh, the newbies especially. Uh, don't ever think that things come by in just a week, two weeks, one month, two months, six months, one year. <laughs> I mean, I, but I, I, I can tell one thing. Uh, sometimes you really don't know when you are being scrutinized. So uh, keep working hard, and that's it, basically. <clears throat> Never tire out. That's what I'm saying. Um, when things do not look so brilliant, so clear, just keep on tracking and believe in your abilities. I have always believed in my abilities, even when I am in the uh, elite of matches abroad, Champions League finals. I just stick to my to my abilities and say, listen, I can produce, I can deliver, and basically that's it. Points to keep in mind. Um, keep in mind the requirements that the client requires. So speak with the picture editor, tell him how in what way he will be reading the pictures, and you will be okay. Um, make sure that you send out the correct image measurements. This is and the, the resolution as well. As per requested, um, a normal final cropped image good enough for publication would be that of six inches by four inches and 400 dpi. So this is the least. Some clients, I mean, request, requested a higher resolution in the form of 12 times 8 and 300 dpi. It depends upon the client. So just be. So in your view, here we have four pictures. In your view, I want you to tell me which of these four pictures would you wire out to the media? Hello? Uh, may, I, may I say, so, say try my Yes, my, yes, yes, my sure. Turn. Well, yes. Yes, number, yes, three, number three, I guess, I'm not, I'm not as much as you, as, I'm not a good, Use our football follower, but from hey. the point of photography view action, you I mean think number, I think number three, the, no. the, the bottom one on the left. The bottom one on the left. First of all, thank you for joining, Tony. Th thanks to you for accepting me. Thank you. No problem. Uh, what about the others? Well, I think I think number <clears throat> number two. Shows a bit of uh, our concentration and uh, focusing on that ball. Top right, right? Yes, top right photo. All right, um, Charles. <clears throat> so if we don't have any more suggestions. This is the one I would wire out. The important thing, I mean, all four are good, so we have no problems with that. Uh, this is a very good action picture. This is another good action picture. This I would throw out immediately because there is no facial recognition. Both players are giving me their back, so I base it on facial recognition. When the picture editor sees the picture he has got he has got to get a full view of the face in most cases if it is an exception i mean you can despite the fact that this player is giving a nice pers perspective of the picture as well even if he is obstructing some of the picture but still make sure facial recognition is there <clears throat> So the venue, um, when you are shooting a sports event, any sports event, rugby, football, judo, whatever, be punctual accordingly at the venue. Um, this is very important. And measure your knowledge. Check your girl well beforehand. I mean, I check my girl 
the night before. So I have no problems going to the venue. And they get a, get a general knowledge of what you really need on the day. Any particular angles, particular photos, and most important, the subject. Players on the field, personalities, this is important. Personalities in the VIP area. Sometimes, pre-match, there are all the top VIPs in the VIP area. And when I take my place together with the other photographers, I am speaking before COVID here. Uh, to take the team photos, you can easily see them just take pictures with a 70 to 200 lens and you, you'll get them quite, quite well. So with the picture editor, tell, listen, there is the president of, of UEFA sending there. Can you get me a picture of him? Sure, I'll, I'll make sure that if he knows, I have to know. So it's important that you follow the, the, the rules. Again, general know-how, get a general know-how of, of as to who is who. I mean, you can't go the athletes themselves Refer to important media releases, press kits, lineups, downloads. They are all provided by the event organizers. In this case, I mean, UEFA, uh, before the, any Champions League game, they send um, press kits so that you will have a clear picture of not only who's playing, but uh, the players themselves. So this is very, very important. I mean, you can't go to a, to a football match without knowing who is playing, without knowing who the players are. Get into the field itself. I take this. This was Barcelona, Barcelona Man United. And uh, I go to the event uh, about three and a half hours before kickoff. I just uh, have a look at the, at the stadium. If I have the chance to roam, Around the stadium, I can do it. I mean, look at these top shots. This is a, a fisheye picture. This is a fisheye picture as well. Interesting pictures of uh, important personalities. Ferguson, Solskjaer. This is Leo, Leo Messi as a mascot here. This incidentally was published the day after. <clears throat> Again, behind the scenes, Manchester City, Chelsea, Juventus. These are all three fisheye pictures. You've got to speak your client's language. Positioning, positioning myself. This is the position that normally I take whenever it is possible. Uh, at the moment, because of COVID, it is a little bit restrained. So sometimes I stay on this side, near the corner flag. But this is my preferred position because Look at the perspectives I have, and it is very, very convenient. Expect the unexpected. These are unexpected pictures, which all provide interesting uh, viewing uh, for, the, for the viewer. Um, uh, some of them were published. This side, I still remember it was published in the front page of the old independent again unusual captures look at this have a look at have a clear look at this this is the Malta Marathon. this was a lovely looking guy <laughs> at the barcelona game and this is a boxing picture as you can see the focus is on the head of the referee the glove of the referee uh, this is champions league when Real Madrid scored um, against Roma. So as you can see, expect again the unexpected. Uh, this mascot, for example, was totally drenched in water. Uh, all gates, floodgates uh, went open. And uh, Malta Steve Borch um, presented, <coughs> presented the his top to the boy who was shivering, basically. An interesting mascot here. And this is the only picture I have of, of a pitch in Malta dredged in sleep. <coughs> so, uh, 
as you can see, uh, incidentally, this was taken with, with, with my iPhone because the match was abandoned and I had all my gear all ready to go back home. And I just hit it with my iPhone. And I think it's one picture which I, I really like. <clears throat> Again, celebration pictures, unusual pictures. Look at the expressions of these. Uh, these are, uh, I mean, you've got to be diverse, creative, and very, very attentive. Um, if you just shift focus on something else or you speak to somebody, you can miss all these. Getting the picture at the right moment. Again, you've got to go concentrate. Uh, this is one picture which doesn't come that often. A powerboat capsizing, uh, which is not the ideal situation for the uh, pilot. Um, but uh, luckily, uh, nothing happened, and the uh, the guys uh, got him immediately out of the boat. Uh, so you've got to be uh, really attentive. Again, never hesitate. A picture doesn't come by a second time. Does it all begin at kickoff, and is it all over at the final whistle? No, never. Getting back on this, you can take some very interesting picture before the match starts and some very interesting picture after the match. So basically, if it is a very, very important game, which, for example, went to the wire, uh, this picture, for example, was used by UEFA in the fair play statute. Um, you will see the, the official cover of it later on. So as you can see, it's all about depicting what others cannot see. That has always been my mod. Get that capture which others cannot see. Very simple. So what really makes you a, a good sports photographer? Three picture with which basically say it all. It's all about anticipation and perfect timing. Uh, you've got to know the <coughs> the um, sport discipline and what is going to happen next. <coughs> Captured a special moment. This picture was taken through a window glass pane. It doesn't show, but here it shows the handle of that. I couldn't miss it. Um, and despite this, as you know, with media, you can crop it, but you can't clone it away. It's against ethics. <coughs> so it's then as it is. So the process one is the capture. This is the original capture. Luckily, I got the framing right. Each and every player showing well. Step two, the process. I use, by the way, I take images in both JPEG and RAW. Both. When I need something really in detail, I go for the, the RAW image. And, and I have the time. So uh, the digital photo professional, which can improvise, is for me the best solution from RAW to JPEG conversion. It is a little bit slow compared to Capture One. I use Capture One as well. So Capture One for me is the best. But in colors, I still believe DPP, which is Digital Photo Professional, is the best RAW to JPEG conversion application one can find. It still lacks, I mean, it still is a little bit slow um, but i mean if you want one particular picture you can do it in a flash step three photoshop check basic levels crop resize according to the client's request 
in I am talking here in measurements, nothing else. So basically, you have done the picture. Uh, as you can see, I, I practically I had nothing to do in this picture because it went. This was the original. So basically, I just checked levels, and then it was ready. Step four: captioning. <coughs> And this is something that here in Malta, unfortunately, is still a long, long, long way um, away. Uh, abroad, they won't, and probably, Charles, you know all about it. Uh, probably, abroad, they will not, they will never, shall I say, they will never accept a picture without captioning embedded. Captioning, what is embedded captioning? Is the IPTC. I use photo mechanic for it. I get all my pictures on photo mechanic and I start the process. This is the metadata. The metadata is the Bible of captioning a picture. So this is partially how it looks. Uh, you just fill in all the important things, headline, keywords, person shown, whatever. And yes, this is done during an event. And the caption has to look as simple as can be. Look at this. Just read it yourselves. Keep it simple. But it has to be correct. And it has to be precise. But don't go overboard with with uh, unnecessary words like, for example, I don't know, in a goal, some papers say Mosalah blasted the ball into the net. In the caption, it doesn't make sense. In a newspaper, it does. But when we send pictures, it's, we keep it simple with simple words. <coughs> and details are got to be to be very, very precise. Again, look at this picture, look at the caption. Look at this. The simpler, the merrier. But again, it is important to describe who is who. And in which position Lionel Messi center? This is not copyright, by the way. This is center. <coughs> if he would have been here, I would have put left. If he would have been here, I would have put right. So as you can see, um, it's very, very uh, interesting. I specialize in, in captioning. It's why one of my specialties. I try to be I mean, the two agencies I, I work for in, in Berlin, EPA and Demago, obviously uh, need all the pictures captured. So transmission, and this is important. On my Mac here, I use Transmit FTP, which is an application I love. It's very, very robust. I mean, you have no problems at all, secure. And when I'm working on my laptop, I use CyberDuck FTP. CyberDuck FTP comes for free with a donation. I think Transmit, you've got to purchase. And both are mostly reliable. Obviously, I, I, trans, I prefer Transmit FTP. What about WhatsApp? I'll be telling you, because WhatsApp plays a very important part in today's media. Let me give you an example. This is Inter Barcelona. Uh, this was the 6th November in 2018. I still remember that. All of a sudden, all gates broke loose. Torrential rain, which impeded me even to open my laptop. I couldn't just send pictures in my normal way, I had everything with me, 
but still everything was drenched. And I couldn't manage. I just couldn't manage. Not even at half time, uh, torrential rain, they didn't stop. So these two pictures, which you can see, this is the Malt Independent, were sent via WhatsApp. You say, how about WhatsApp? I'll tell you how it works. It is, I download my images on the Canon Camera Connect application on my mobile, get them there, um, and then send on WhatsApp. Another application, useful application, which Canon has launched recently, is the Canon Mobile File Transfer application. This basically can replace um, a metadata, a caption, which is done on the laptop. It is a little bit complicated on the mobile, but still you can do it. These are some of the screenshots. You can fill in all the blanks here. I mean, with the uh, with the details of the pictures and all of the P. Basically, you can do anything. The keywords, the headline, exactly as you are sending it via your your laptop. Ethics, play it fair. Do not be tempted. Again, it's all about when you are sending pictures to any media source, you can cheat. You cannot cheat. It is all about doing levels, checking levels, cropping, and basically nothing else. It is your responsibility and, every, and that of every photojournalist to strive for pictures that are more truthfully, honestly, and objectively. So if you are basically want to cheat in a picture, you are kidding yourself and you are kidding everybody yeah? until you, you get something caught. My clients, let's start with Weva. How do I work with, with Weva? So, so basically it's Weva.com, <coughs> pictures which are featured on the official website of Weva. These are screenshots on my, on my mobile <coughs> of the Champions League, the last Champions League, first qualifying round, and the new Europa Conference League, first qualifying round, which took place in Malta in last summer. So, one, the pretty much warm-up phase. Look at this. This is Hibernius, pretty much. It's all about getting the right pictures. I speak my client's language, I know what they want. Basically, after all these years, I know what they want. It's all about celebrations, happy pictures like this. This is Jay Greg of Hibernian smiling. Uh, a foreign team getting all ready in warm up for the game. The four official flags. And again, a warm up a warm-up of the Estonian team playing in the Champions League against the Belgians. So as you can see, this is the pre-match phase. Again, pre-match, the referees warming up. These are, these are all screenshots from UEFA.com. <coughs> the team from, player from the team from Estonia, Hibernius warming up, and the referees warming up for the game. The re-election, the live scores. Um, as you know, I mean, with today's media, you get to know the result in just a flash. And uh, these are pictures in real time. I mean, most uh, these are all screenshots from wefa.com, as you can see, from my mobile, Hibernians. This was, this, incidentally, this was being played during the Euro. So as you can see um, here, it's a picture of, of uh, Harry Kane, and then the picture of the, the visitors playing in Malta, Xira United here. I mean, making it to the next round, 
as well. As you can see, uh, pictures get switched instantly according to what's happening during the game. Again, Berkirkara, it's the, the live score phase here. So uh, everything that is happening, uh, they put on the who was scoring, who was uh, I mean, uh, winning with the results, and they associate it with the pictures I am sending during the game. So uh, as you can see, Berkirkara here, Mosta here. Again, live score phase, it's as you can see, Hibernians against um, Flora of Estonia. Uh, the Estonian team scoring, the Estonian team celebrating. And again, this is Xira. So that was how I work locally. These are the these are some images taken during Champions League finals. This is the uh, 2017 final, as, as you can see here. Uh, we've got a picture which was published on Wolfo.com. Uh, basically, it was the uh, next day minus one, the eve of the final itself, with the two teams um, preparing uh, during training. And I took this picture. Uh, they love fisheye pictures. And it was published. Why do you think it was published in your views? Can I have an answer from somebody, please? <laughs> Any answer? Well, I'll tell you why. This was the first ever final uh, to be played in a stadium with a closed roof. So as you can see, the roof here is closed and it was published immediately on UEFA's um, official homepage. Uh, again, Cardiff 2017, I was hovering around the stadium. It was raining, you can imagine Cardiff. And I took this picture. It's the steward with an official Wales um, Welsh umbrella. And as you can see, it was featured in the homepage of UEFA. Uh, I'm mean, getting a picture in the uh, nowadays uh, it's the pinnacle. I mean, I've had quite a lot of them and I'm very uh, pleased and I pride myself in these because getting a picture from all those photographers um, and seeing your picture is just a thrill, as you can see, you are all photographers. Again, a Juventus and Real Madrid supporters shaking hands before the final itself. And it's on the homepage of UEFA. Some interesting pictures of Chiellini scoring against Barcelona. This is group stage here. Uh, as you can see, Messi in training, uh, Luis Enrique trying to see <laughs> clearly because of the light coming from opposite him. And the first thing I do when I go to a Champions League final, I get to the highest possible position and take some fisheye pictures of the match venue, which, as you know, is the most important thing in, for a final. It's the venue. Here it is, Stadio San Siro in Milan. And as you can see, it was published immediately soon after. So uh, you've got to speak the language of the of the client. Some unexpected pictures, Atletico Madrid coach um, getting out of the press conference. 
it was it was featured as well. And this is one picture which stands out. This was uh, Milan uh, again. It was the final was being played between Atletico Madrid and Real Madrid. And this guy who is uh, an Atletico, to be honest, I thought it would be more. There would be more rivalry, but nothing happened to lovely sets of supporters. And <clears throat> I love this picture. It was featured as well. This is one of my my finest, probably. Piazza del Duomo, exactly two hours before the the final. Two hours before the final, or two and a half hours, I was still stuck here <coughs> in, in Piazza del Duomo. And I still remember this picture. The final itself, Stadio San Siro. Some lovely pictures, even on the Malt Independent. And the, you've got to create a picture with, which tells a story, basically. This is Berlin, the Olympia Stadion, again featured on UEFA.com. It's one of my loveliest. Stadio, Stadio um, Bernabeu. I opted for this picture because I wanted something different. I didn't want the usual stuff inside. So I decided to, before entering the, the stadium, I decided for this fisheye picture. And again, it was, I think, on UEFA have quite a lot of platforms, Twitter, you name it, they've got it on. I think it was Twitter, yes, Twitter here. Yeah. Again, same game, inside the stadium. Uh, I got permission to go to the, to the loo. <laughs> and uh, I told the steward here, and I told him, listen, can I, if you don't me mess up there, and normally, they really don't fancy that. So I went up with a camera and got this lovely fisheye picture of these these guys. Again, pictures on the it was Real Madrid Roma here. Yeah. Um member associations, this is what they get here in Malta. Uh, I'm taking I'm showing you this picture because this room was really small. Well I had was this UEFA sticker or logo brand or whatever here? So I had to use my fish, eye, my fish eye basically to get this picture, which was ultimately featured as well. Um, this is very interesting. It was Birgit Kara, West Ham United, Europa League in 2015. Basically, this game went to the wire. Uh, Birgit Kara was playing. West Ham United, and Birkel Kara lost in London 1-0. Here in Malta, they were winning 1-0, and the, the game went to, into extra time. And my picture editor in London told me, Dom, we have featured all your pictures. How about, as you can see, this is all live. This is important. So I decided that exactly before the extra time kicked off. I went to the, I think it was fourth level where the TV cameras are situated. And I took, I took this fisheye picture to demonstrate that this stadium was at nearly full capacity. And they really liked the picture. This is a tournament I covered basically by myself. It was a, one of the toughest. I'm in 2014, the under-17s. I had a guy from, from Ireland. He had me out in the first three days with the official team photos at the hotels. But then it was up to me. I had one driver with me all the time, going from one place to another, including Gozo. It was tough. I was exhausted. and. The day I finished with this big tournament, I had to fly to Lisbon for the UEFA Champions League for the final. Incidentally, England won the, the trophy. Again, Champions League. Look at this picture. This is Stamford Bridge, London. 
just cameras depicting Stratford Bridge. This is the Chelsea bus coming into Stratford Bridge. As you can see, this is the home page as well. And so, some other interesting uh, photos from the Allianz in Bayern, in uh, the home home stadium of Bayern München. Um, as you can see, this is one majestic stadium which you can take picture from outside or inside, whatever. Again, countdown to kickoff, the live updates. This is the Allianz. So. Uh, uh, Philip Lam was going to present a 100,000 check to ICRC, and they wanted a picture depicting the Allianz um, just before the match. So as you can see, TV cameras all set up. Again, the under-17 tournament in Malta. Uh, this was 2014. Uh, I had Basically, I think three or four UEFA.com journalists. One of them was Tom Kell here. He's a lovely guy, and he put up uh, an interesting um, interview with Adel Muscat, which, had, as you know, at that time and probably still is the uh, Malta's top sports psychologist. And I had to hit on the dome. Get me a good picture of Adil. And I instantly I thought, listen, um, Adil holding two players whom she takes care of. And as you can see, it's a very simple picture, but yet it's, it's very, very significant. It, it can speak uh, volumes. And it blended well, obviously, with the, with the interview. So let me ask you a question. This is the European qualifiers. It was uh, Malta against Italy. And uh, it was on the homepage of UEFA.com. What bugs you with this picture? Can I have an answer, please? The left was coming out. Yeah. Precisely so. Precisely so. Very good. Yet you cannot do anything. If it was a normal picture, I don't know. I mean, you can easily take it off in just a couple of seconds. But in media, you cannot temper with this kind of things. No, you cannot. Just imagine I would have taken this off. What about this? It's a little bit. I don't do it basically. But this is a very, very good example. Again, be there when it really matters, the, the previous picture. Be diverse. This was the multinational team in, in uh, I think, in Cadiz, Spain. I decided to get some different angles with the focus on the balls in match day minus one. This is training. I for detail and documentation. This is was Malta and the uh, in January. It was for um, uh, no, no. This was at the time that Europe was dipped as low as four four uh, four degrees. And yet in Malta, here in Malta, we had some lovely sun. These are the Maltese substitutes uh, taking some sort of uh, uh, sort of um, shelter from the sun. Uh, this is the, the picture which I depicted before. And this was a, a, a picture um, which really made the headlines because this guy on his calf had this interesting tattoo. This was Maximiliano Velasco. <laughs> and when enlarged, it's a father with his son moving towards a goalpost with the ball. 
and uh, it was featured on UEFA.com. So that was UEFA. Uh, now it's the Malt Independent. I have been working with the Malt Independent since 2016. I love it. Lovely people. Chris Kassar at the moment is the top journalist here. His daughter, um, Janet, takes care of the layout. And I work well. I mean, since COVID, things changed. I used to take care of all the sports event during the, the week and the weekend as well. And nowadays, we, we've switched to game by game, basically. These are some interesting documentations. Uh, I want you to notice the, <clears throat> the layouts. Um, I prefer this layout, for example. We'll be talking about the lay layouts here. Three different layouts from this from 2021. One, two, three. Which do you prefer in your view? The first one, the players facing the players, etc. The second one is good because you have two different pages on the corner from the base. The third one is Yes, uh, very good. Basically, I prefer this one. This is my style. I'm in a big picture at the top, and it says it all. This is interesting because I had from the Rolex with the series, I had some lovely pictures. Huh? And it was nice to see three pictures. But they did three pictures because the top one is still quite, quite uh, it takes the limelight because the write up was obviously um, not that much. But myself personally, this is my favorite. <clears throat> your favorite it was the number one because I can't see the pointer when you say 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 it again please when you say your preferred picture is the number one the one with one photo yeah the number one the okay. the um you see my pointer the my my mouse pointer no that's why I that's why I uh, all right all right. Uh, the one which says too easy for dominant Spain. Okay. I, even I agree. For me, that's the best layout. Even the action of the players and the first time. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, it's, it tops the, the, the agenda. Uh, this is, as you know, I'm a football journalist as well. And when the the Premier League breaks up for the festive season break. I put <coughs> I put a feature with my best images. This was from last season. And as you can see, uh, these top uh, my my agenda. I mean, five brilliant pictures, which basically speaks speak for itself. Three of them were taken in torrential rain. One, two, three. <coughs> and this is from this season. I mean, this was published on the 29th of December of this year. Another five. Lovely. This is my favorite one, for example. Uh, pictures which I try to be as creative as possible. <coughs> and not the normal action pictures, which you say it's an action picture. Again, a very simple, when Hamro Spartans were declared champions, we had no uh, uh, pictures with the trophy because of COVID, and we had to put a picture. So basically, the picture editor asked me and told me, Dom, listen, what do we put up? <clears throat> I told him, listen, it's the team photo which takes pride of place, nothing else. Another interesting picture is Malta against Russia. Top picture. The final itself. Um, as you can see, this picture was published. <laughs> uh, some of them, um, this was mine. This is what I think I've got three, four. This is the goal of Origi. 
and the others were taken by an agency. The middle picture, it's, it's, it's minus one. Same thing, a double spreader, when Valletta won the 25th the title, it was a historic penalty shootout, a very, very long season, which really went to the wire. One of the probably the most exciting season to date. Water polo, as you can see, some interesting uh, captures. This was Walter's first win in 13 years. Uh, we beat the Faroe Islands 2 1. <coughs> we decided to put a double spread. Uh, this is Sadre Bodello um, uh, saving the the decisive penalty during the game. And this was um, Malta, Spain. They beat us 2 0. Again, it's all about the Malta national team. Champions League, this was in 2017, and they decided to put it on the home, the front cover. Some other pictures. And this is a very interesting uh, interview I did with, with Alex Ivovic. Uh, this guy is probably still ranked about the third or second best water polo player in the world. Luckily, we had him here in Malta playing for San Julian back in 2017. And he accepted my invitation to do an interview. It makes very interesting reading, and I still, I still tre treasure it today. At rugby, as you can see, it's been quite a long time since I, since I covered rugby. So this, this dates back to 2016. Um, uh, boxing, so I will tell you all about uh, this difficult sport, which is uh, boxing is one difficult sport to to capture, indeed. And I work as well as a freelancer for the Times of Malta. These were from <clears throat> this season, all of them, especially the one on the right. Uh, of the Malta players celebrating their last minute equalizing goal against Cyprus in Cyprus. And the Malta national team. So what are, what are my duties with the Malta FA and how does it work? <clears throat> it's very, very simple. We re rely very much on real time pictures so the moment it is captures it is captured on my camera i just if it needs editing i edit it on my camera <coughs> um download it or download all the images on my iphone select what is best and send on our whatsapp group which is called the Malta National Team Media Group. It is shared between us only, and the communication officer decides which pictures to send to the media, to put on social media, on all the MFA platforms, etc. So basically, as you can see, this is a very simple picture. You've got seconds here, basically, of the players uh, going up, uh, leaving Malta arriving at the destination airport, pre-match minus one, training, the venue. This is a particular picture, bottom right, of the Spartak Moscow Stadium, in which Malta played last October in Moscow. As you can see, a lovely skyline reflected on the glass panes. You've got to be a little bit creative. Again, interesting pictures during that week. The kit manager taking care of the of the uh, the players' jerseys, 
jerseys for the for the match itself, the national co speaking at, at a press conference, national co speaking to the players. The match itself <coughs> in duration sleep in the beginning, but then it died down. And the match itself, it's action. All these pictures are relayed via my phone and via WhatsApp into the group. Again, how it works, it's all, this is both here in Malta and when playing abroad. It's the pre-match, must arriving with the players, the warm-up of players before the big, before the big match. It's a phase by phase. Each phase, I have to select four or five images and send via WhatsApp. Incidentally, and this is very interesting to note for all of you, that the WhatsApp application is the only application that keeps a certain resolution. It's much better. You can't, for example, you can't publish a picture in a newspaper if it is sent on, for example, Messenger. You can't. In WhatsApp, it can keep a very, very good 6 inches by 4 inches, 300 dpi resolution, which can be easily featured on a newspaper, in print, I'm saying, in print, not on social media. So this is interesting to note. That is why WhatsApp is, is used uh, to, to a certain extent. Uh, Pre-match bus arriving, match best images, obviously, and goal scored, most important thing. Uh, within the, the Malta FA. Any significant uh, photos of actions taking place. And as, uh, as I told you, they are really relayed um, uh, into Malta FA social media platforms in real time. During half time, I have the responsibility to email at my own discretion a significant, a significant number, say five or six, to the local media via email. So all those listed on the Malta FA email list uh, will get all the pictures and can use them accordingly as they prefer. Agencies. This is the PA. I'm a Slinger since 2016. As you can see, these are some samples of pictures used in foreign media. Uh, this is my favorite one. I'll be telling you all about it in the new course. Uh, Alvaro Morata. Um, this was taken in London. It was FA Cup semi-final. I was working not here. I was not working for UEFA. I was working for a PA. Uh, a photographer of theirs missed out and they wanted an urgent replacement. And in two days, I left for London and covered the two semifinals on Saturday and Sunday. It was Arsenal against Saturday, Chelsea, Tottenham. And Sunday, it was Arsenal against Man City. This is Ramsey celebrating a goal here. And this, incidentally, was used as one of the top 10 photos uh, in the garden. And it stands out today as one very, very proud capture I have. Uh, obviously, they, uh, this was the link. I kept it here uh, from the garden. This is an example of how much a photo can travel. DS is a media source, an online media source in Cuba. It's in Spanish. Uh, it was this this photo was taken um, at the Champions League finals. I was doing it as well for my agency, APA, apart from UEFA. And uh, as soon as I wired this photo, I got to know that it was published in Cuba. <coughs> Again, published in another, um, I think this was uh, uh, Vienna uh, in, in Austria. Uh, 
these are all for for uh, what I was working for the PA, my my agency. This is the the official platform of the uh, agency I work with. I work with. I mean, if you can buy it, you can buy it easily. I mean, <clears throat> you just search Cristiano Ronaldo and all the pictures of Cristiano Ronaldo, Ronaldo come up. Come up. In this case, I put a search of Chris, Cristiano Ronaldo on Necacualeda, and my picture came up with all the details uh, according to my metadata which is very, very important. Here are all the details which I put up in my metadata. Again, um, some, as you know, I mean, sports is my specialty, but I work as well in, in news for a PA, so anything important that is happening in Malta. I've got to report immigrants coming in, the hijack, uh, Merkel, and the, the prince here in Malta, this was used in the garden, I think in the garden, yes. So, uh, Imago, this is a different style of agency. I'm a partner, a partner basically. I'm a 50%, 50% partner of all the profits, of all the profits that are generated via my captures. And uh, these are some images. Uh, which recently they did a very interesting interview with me in, uh, I think, March of 2001, 2021. And uh, I love it with them because there are no real uh, contracts. I mean, I'm a freelancer. I just go on with my work, but they love, they love what I do. These are some captures which I want to I want you to have a look at the, the details, how they were taken. If you want to ask something, please do. Mainly, my style is that I shoot, obviously, in a servo. And I use aperture value. I use AV. So I give the exposure to my lens and to my camera. And then, obviously, I play around with the shutter speed. Here, we are not talking about manual. I play it with AV. So it's not on manual. It's not on TV. It's AV. AV, AI servo, and that's it. Sometimes I switch to TV. TV is the, I choose the shutter speed myself. But mostly it's AV, aperture value. That's my style. So if you want to ask something, please do. Again, have a look at this. Uh -huh. If you were talking about what? And what do you mean by pattern detection? What do I mean? Um, uh, that's a problem. And what do you mean by pattern metering? By pattern, it'll be, it's, it's the metering. Basically, I use pattern. Pattern is the metering I get from my cover to, to, to evaluate the light coming in through a pattern. Uh, there are different metering in the cameras, as you know. It's evaluative. Uh, some prefer evaluative. You've got about three or four or five, something like that on the camera. I have always, okay. in, in sports, this is a very good question, eh? because some use evaluative, which is quite good and correct. But sometimes I prefer pattern. Sometimes I use a value, whatever as well. One interesting thing I want to tell you about is the ISO. Do not be afraid to pump up the ISO. That is what the ISO is there. Look at this picture. It's taken in 16,000 
ISO. If it was not 16,000, I would have not got these, this shutter speed, not at all. I was shooting at a four with my 400, the F4 one. This, same thing, 12,800 ISO. Do not be afraid to pump up the ISO. That's what is there for, 10,000. Okay, it's a still image. <clears throat> but still, it gives me sharpness and it gives me what I need in a picture. Same thing, 10,000. I don't care about getting a grainy picture or whatever, or a little, a little, as long as I get the picture, even if it's, it produces some sort of noise, but as long as I get, I don't care. All I think is about the picture and <clears throat> freezing the action. Again, this was in artificial light at the National uh, Pool in Tal Ro. It's not the ideal of situations and light. I was lucky to get the basically a very, very correct. Um, look at this. It's center weighted average metering because at the national pool, I switch because light and, and, and these, listen, you've got to experiment with these. If you don't experiment, you will be stuck. It's all about getting to know your camera. If you don't experiment and say, listen, this is best for this. This is best for that. Don't worry. But you have got to explore your camera. This is center weighted, for example. This is pattern metering. At the national pool, I use center weighted. <clears throat> so uh, it's a little bit, again, pattern. Look at the ISO here. 16,000. If it was not for 16,000, you will not have this, these uh, tiny droplets coming out uh, of the pitch itself. Here I used pattern aperture priority. I, I use pattern here because it was not artificial light. It was daylight, daylight. So you've got to explore. Sixteen thousand. As well, this picture was in torrential rain. It was published in the Vault Independent with my four hundred. Any questions? Feel free to stop me. Don't worry. Again, center weighted. At the Pichita. this was getting dark. Lights were up, so I decided to go for center weighted. This was daylight pattern. This is one of my 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 best. It was the Coleman Cup uh, with my 70 to 200 plus extender. Center weighted again. This was quite OK, 60, 640, ISO 640. Uh, I chose ISO because I wanted a, lit, uh, a little bit of water droplets, droplets coming, coming out. This is one picture which I still treasure very much. It's center weighted. I was playing with light here. This was taken at Aria in San Juan, and uh, boxing is one very, very difficult sport. Uh, I think light here was LEDs, so I had one big problem with light. Some frames were get, getting, I, I had some frames getting half clear, half dark. I had to 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 adapt myself very well, but I got this picture and I was happy. 
I want you to read to to have a look at this. This is the classic um, glove two face punch. I mean, you go to a boxing event and uh, basically you take hundreds of pictures and you don't get it right. Uh, this is one of the few I can say uh, that I hit it right. And uh, I, I won quite, quite a good number of awards with this picture. It's the perfect picture. Uh, but have a look at the ISO again. It's 25,600 here. Uh, why did I choose aperture on F3.2 when I could have done with 2.8? Because if I had been on 2.8, most probably one of these guys would have been a little, a little bit out of focus. So you've got to play it by the ear. I chose F3.2, shutter speed I was given 5,300. And this is, these were not LEDs, so I, I, I shot on pattern metering. Always, always on AI servo. Uh, meaning that the camera is looking for the, for mo the movement itself. What about shutter speed? Look at this. This was taken at the Shotgun World Cup stage in Malta, I think about three years ago. <clears throat> and I may I managed to get the the shotgun pellet coming coming out of the of the shotgun itself and the clay target as well. So it's the maximum. Look at this. It's the maximum the camera can get me. My Canon can get me. It's one on over 8,000 of a second. ISO in brilliant sun, 1,000, F2.8. So as you can see, uh, you've got to, uh, to uh, get things uh, well planned before you start shooting. This is a very interesting story I want to share with you. Uh, basically, <laughs> I'm not talking on birds. But this bird took my eye during a Malta Premier League match about three years ago. Nothing was happening, it was boring. And I saw, I see this big bird flying over the Centenary Stadium. And immediately I noticed this was no no simple bird, I mean. And I took all these pictures and it landed in the nearby training grounds. And I managed to get this picture of it. I left I left the I left taking pictures of the actual game, got into the training grounds from I mean there was an open door. It's just side by side. And I noticed that it had rings. And somehow I got, I had a feeling that this bird was, was not, I don't know, it, it was something special. So in a moment I decided to send the picture to Bird Life Walter. And the guy at the other end immediately responded. And he told me, are you serious, Don? I told him, I'm serious, yeah. He told me, that bird is the first bald ibis, which has flew into Malta. We never had anything like it. Apparently, it flew off as a fugitive from Italy. It was brought up by this young girl. And after, I don't know, I mean, uh, in a flash, the Malta Football Association <coughs> um, officials were 
on the alert because they thought it would be hand down. And uh, policemen were all, all over the training grounds. Uh, luckily, after two days, it was caught up in Gozo and sent back uh, in, in Italy. Uh, and again, back to the uh, owner, which was uh, Nicole. And uh, I still I still remember quite vividly this 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 story. So as you can see, anything can happen, and even if you are not expecting it. What's in the bag? I've got four um, basic uh, cameras. The new one, the R3, which I got as a Christmas present for me. <laughs> and uh, three of them are the, the mirrorless, and one of them is the, the SLR. Uh, I've got the 400 2.8, the 300 2.8. I sold the 400 F4, which was a real favorite one, in order to get um, a 400. And uh, these are my, my stuff. So basically, we are nearing the end. Uh, how do I, how do you get your accreditation? Be ultra polite, never ar argue about the final de decision. And the decision of the, the event organizers is always final. Never complain. You will not get, a, get anything back. No shows. No shows, especially in Champions League, is fundamental. If you don't show up in a UEFA Champions League final and next year, be sure they don't even take care of your accreditation request. Copyright issues. I mean, social media, take care of your images, uh, put your uh, watermark as best as can be. Um, dealing with copyright infringement, I, I am still one of those guys who, uh, sadly to this day, <coughs> still get it up, as you can Imagine uh, pictures sadly are still posed up, uh, not as as it used to be before. Before it was, it used to be much much worse. Um, but that's the rule of the thumb, basically. Um, when you are selling your pictures and ne negotiating with copyright fees, these are the four fundamental things to keep in mind. Never be hasty. Don't, don't uh, come up to decisions with a haste. Ask for advice if possible. If you are not sure, why not ask for, uh, for advice? Be careful, obviously, from uh, which source you take advice. Always show a professional attitude and evaluate in what way will your image be made use of. Depends where it will be used and in which way. I will speak about this later. Insurance um, depends upon the nature of your work, what you really want. So, copyright agreements. This is a picture I took of the Teatro Manuel. One, when dealing with an imported client, make sure how your images will be by line credited. In this case, it's Doble Cacualena Teatro Manuel. And if you still, if you don't sign, this is very, very important. If you don't sign any sort of agreement, which binds you that all the pictures will be retained exclusively by your client. And here you have got to reason out the fee, because if you sign this sort of contract, your pictures will be the client's pictures, basically, and you will not have the exclusive rights anymore. So if you do not sign any sort of agreement and the client does not tell you anything, you are still the copyright holder of the picture. 
So can you still sell your pictures when already made use of during a photo event that you have been commissioned? Yes, the picture remains your, your sole copyright. So you can do that, no problem. Again, infringements. This was, I was speaking to Charles um, because this presentation I was going to do next week. And next week there is the a football tournament, which incidentally, I had a very big argument last year. And this is it. This is a tournament which takes place here in Malta. Four teams coming from the Czech Republic, uh, I think from Austria, and uh, I sent pictures to a guy from the from the uh, local from the foreign uh, official sponsor, and in one of my pictures, I see the one on the left. If you are seeing photo, Michael Zbradek, and this was my picture. I took it up by myself and insisted that the byline credit should be corrected immediately. Otherwise, I will speak to my, to my lawyer, and if it is not put up correctly in 24 hours, I will speak to my lawyer. And eventually it was done. So here we've got to be, your picture is your picture. Nobody can take it away from you. And this has always been my motto. Again, a legal breach of, of copyright when you are putting pictures on social media, um, try to post your watermark. Sometimes it's difficult, sometimes they even take them, take, take them off. <clears throat> and this is one big issue I had during this season. Um, Zero United, and how, I normally when I put a post on Facebook or on Instagram, it's associated with a picture of mine. And if you read this, I want you to read this in detail. It will not take long. And this was Zero United against Hamro Spartans. And uh, something which I did not expect happened. I mean, this guy, Dodo Soares, he plays for Capo Verde. They are in the African Nations Cup as well. Um, fractured at that moment. Everyone thought it was an ankle injury, an ankle fracture. But eventually, it was uh, more than that. It was um, quite a horrible injury, uh, which left the player inactive for about three months. Now he's back training with Hamburg Spartans. He missed the African Nations Cup because of this injury. And I got that picture. At that moment, I knew I had taken the action, but I realized I had taken that picture when I was editing my pictures back at home. So first thing, you've got to talk it up with the picture editor himself. And after speaking with my picture editor, we decided to opt out of publication. It was a very good picture, but I didn't want to be selfish here. I just wanted to believe that ethics should make part of the picture. It's a respect for the player. It's a respect for the player. And for some time, I, I never got to show this picture. I want to show it to you. I mean, um, you will see the 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 horrible moment this guy got his his injury i mean and uh, but it's all about the the ethics of publishing graphic should we show should we or should we not it depends upon the it is a personal inter interpretation as i say some prefer the real 
sensation of showing some something sensation. Some prefer uh, that that day. I believed that I, if I would have published the picture, it was it would have been very very unfair on the on the player itself. And this is the picture which you will see here. Look at the at the the way his ankle is twisted underneath. So basically, later on, this guy told me, Dom, can you send me the picture? Because I want to keep it. And I told him, listen, as you wish. And uh, basically, he promised me it would not be in his on his show, social media platforms because I promised that this would not have been, been published. And uh, he promised me so, so I sent him the picture. These are some of my best. I mean, this is the probably my best picture in my career. Uh, it led me quite a good number of owners abroad here in Malta. It's Lionel Messi against Man United. Uh, Liverpool. This was published. This was even put as a as a roll up in Anfield during a Champions League in the VIP area. With this picture, I won in Moscow as well. <clears throat> and these are some of the front covers I had for UEFA. This was taken in Munich from six floors up. This was the picture I, I talked to you about. Again, um, it's all about fair play regulations. It's the Statute of UEFA. And these are my 14 Champions League finals. Uh, obviously, as you know, COVID impeded me from going to the last two, which is a real pity. These are the pictures which which won me the Photographer of the Year um, awards. Last one being this, 2020. Branding, try to keep abreast of your of your of what you really are i mean even during covid times um i'm very active on on social media on facebook and on especially on instagram i use twitter as well especially for uefa but basically it's 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 facebook and instagram for me covid 19 covid 19 i mean it changed not only football, but it changed the whole world. Uh, the newspaper was basically was down immediately. My contract, I was out of contract with the World Independent. Still, we found a way to uh, to go around it. I did some some uh, reporting, a story life without football. I used to to keep the sports pages alive. I used uh, we got this thing blast from the past using some uh, special captures taken during past Champions League finals. And this is COVID uh, pictures with with our spectators. This was um, taken in in Latvia again with our spectators when we managed to win against La Latvia in the last moment. This was all taken during during COVID with our spectators. Um, uh, Michael Befsud in his farewell game some pictures depicting what went on during that time. Spectators being uh, checked by a policeman here. Spectators on the left bottom 
uh, watching a game through through trees at the National Stadium, just above the National Stadium, and the the Millennium Stand um, before a, a Premier League game, uh, totally uh, empty without spectators. Again, some news pictures <coughs> of Valletta during that time. <coughs> As you can see, some published, some not. Uh, well, it's all in the genius. This was <laughs> taken by, by my daughter. She's a big Juventus fan as well, like Charles. And uh, she follows football. She's uh, an architect by profession. But football is her favorite passion. She does uh, UEFA VDC as well. She, so she does the uh, the live coverages uh, for UEFA during the games. Uh, not pictures. But here um, she gave me a helping hand and she managed to get this on UEFA.com as well and on the most independent. Um, you get to meet hairy people as well. This is a guy I meet in every Champions League final. Daniele Del Zennaro, he's Italian, he's a lovely guy. Um, when we met the first time in 2005, I was already bald, but his curly hair was totally black, black, black. This was taken in Cardiff, and we meet every now and then. I was in Milan, we have a coffee, and uh, it's nice to, uh, I miss these guys. I mean, whenever I'm in Italy, we go and have a coffee as well. And this is where it all started. Can somebody tell me where I stand or where I kneel? When you were playing with Sengri, I guess. Yeah, straight football, yes. But who is who? Where am I in this picture? Kneeling, standing. Standing with, on the right. Standing on the? On the right. Uh, yes, standing on the right. Standing on the right. I used to play as a goalkeeper there. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> so, uh, basically, we've come to an end.